Welcome great teens, we've got another great lesson in store for you. In fact, we're doing a section I particularly like, which is electric circuits. And some of this, the content might have been taught a little different in grade nine than what you're used to. And I'm really hoping you guys get this. It's a really, really important section for later on. And we're gonna start with just a couple of the basics. So let's go through what we're actually gonna go through today. And in this session, we're going to look at a couple of things which are very, very, very important. First, we're going to look at potential difference, also known as EMF. And we're going to look at the difference between EMF and potential difference, because they are slightly different. We're going to look at current. Um, in grade nine, you probably look to current in terms of the brightness of light bulbs. We're going to make it a little bit more um, qualitative um, today. We're going to look at circuit diagrams. We're going to look at what the um, symbols are, what they look like. Remember, that's very, very important. We're then going to deal with resistance and resistors in series and parallel. It's a very, very important. And in fact, hopefully you've all done a prac where you've done resistors in series and parallel because it's actually very, very important. So, lots to get through. Let's dive straight in and we're going to start with potential difference. Now, potential difference is actually a really important little concept. And the definition of potential difference is that it is the work done per unit charge okay now great tens what i need you to get here is when we consider potential difference it's measured in volts so you all you all heard of voltage we often we often interchange the two words a cell or a battery which we use has potential difference now that potential difference is known as the emf okay so the emf we get from our cell okay now EMF particularly, and I have got this down here, is the potential difference of the batteries when the circuit is not complete. So if I had to draw this for you to see, I would have a cell, okay, and then I would put my voltmeter across the cell. That is measuring my EMF. Now what that means for us is this is the maximum amount of work that the cell can do. Right? It is the maximum amount of work or energy, we interchange work and energy together, that can be given to the charge or the electrons as they pass through the battery. The EMF is like measuring what the energy you get when you have your breakfast in the morning. Okay, so when you sit down for breakfast in the morning, you're getting your EMF for the day. You're getting your potential. As you go through the day, you use up that energy. You don't disappear, charge doesn't disappear, but you use up your energy. So you have to go back and have lunch, which then gives you more energy, and then you have to go back and have dinner. So you have that nice little cycle in terms of eating your food, which is like going through the, the electrons going through the cell, and then you do things during the day. You move from class to class, you play sports, you interact with your friends. That all uses up your energy, and that's your potential difference, okay? Now, potential difference, it's the unit is voltage, is volt, named after a very important scientist by the name of Volt, um, Volta, who invented the first battery, actually. He's the first person who realized we can do batteries, but they also did strange other, some other strange experiments with frogs' legs and all sorts of things. It was quite interesting. Remember, this is 300 years ago, so they didn't have the same equipment we have. And the equation we use is V equals W over Q, where B stands for potential difference, okay, which we often write as potential difference and is measured in volts. W is work, which we also often talk about as energy. Work and energy have a very important relationship. Work is using up energy and energy is the ability to do work, so they work together. And they are measured in joules. Q is charge, which we did in electrostatics, and that's measured in coulombs, okay? Generally, we, 
when we looked at electrostatics, we were looking at very, very small charges, 10 to the minus 19, 10 to the minus 8. Here we're going to be looking at rather big charges because remember, we're talking millions and millions and millions and millions of electrons that are moving at a time. So we get lots of charge moving. All right, so why do we call it potential difference? We've got to look at how we connect a voltmeter. So in a circuit, we have a resistor and I put a voltmeter over the resistor, we say it's connected in parallel because it's branched. What the voltmeter is essentially doing is as the charge gets to the first part of my circuit, so the charge comes along, okay, gets to the first part of the circuit, the voltmeter measures its energy, okay, what, well it measures its electrical potential energy over here, okay. And this is just putting it in really simple terms for you. So we're looking at electrical potential energy. And it has a certain energy at the first part. Then the electrons move through the resistor and it gets here. And now the voltmeter measures its second electrical potential energy. And it minuses the two and tells you what the difference is. So it's called potential difference. So essentially, over a resistor, a voltmeter is measuring how much work is done in moving the charge from one end of the resistor to the other. So it's looking at how much energy is being used. Okay. When we look at it over a cell, the voltmeter is measuring how much work is being done on the electron. Okay. In other words, it's measuring how much energy is being given to the electron. So it gets energy through the battery, loses energy as it goes through the circuit. What's very, very, very important, great teens, please get this. You cannot lose more energy than you were given in the first place. Okay, so if I give, if the cell has a voltage of 10 volts, then through the circuit, I only have 10 volts to give. I only have 10 volts to use up. That can't change. Okay, so you can't get a total from all my components, which you can look at later, that adds up to 12. Because where did the extra come from? Also, I need you to get this as well. The electrons cannot disappear. They can't go on a holiday as they go along or just vanish into space. They are always there. So your current doesn't change the energy that the electrons have changes. Okay, good. Next concept. Now we're going to look at current. Now current is defined as the rate at which charge moves past a fixed point. Rate. Rate means over time. Okay, so essentially in really simple terms, current is the flow of charge. Please note here, this is so important for you to get, we say charge, not electrons. This is important. In a circuit, in an actual chem electrical circuit, it is electrons that move through the metals and the conductors and everything else. But inside the cell, it's not just the electrons that are moving. Okay. In fact, we have positive and negative ions moving because we have a chemical reaction happening. That is important. And when we have positive and negative charges moving, we have current. Please get this, grade 10. This is so, so important. Because later on, when we get to grade 12, you're going to deal with electrolytic circuits, electrolytic cells, and we're going to talk about charges moving, but no longer just electrons. Still current. If there's charge moving, positive or negative, current is flowing. Okay, we have current. The unit of current is the ampere. Okay, capital A, it's also named after someone, and it's defined as one coulomb per second. In other words, one coulomb per second, we can put it like that. Another very important equation, I equals Q over T. Please be careful here, grade tens. I see this all the time. I means current. Okay, it is measured... In amps okay do not put amps do not put AMP that's an 
English abbreviation, not a scientific symbol. It has to be capital A. Also, in circuits, you're often going to be asked to give the reading on an ammeter, which is called A1 or A2 or A3. You can't tell me A1 equals 3, uh, three amps because it doesn't. I equals 3 amperes. Okay, please be careful here. Current is I. Q is charge. Now, I'm sure some of you, if you're paying attention, are going, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Just now, we used a, a lowercase q. Now I'm using a capital Q. Q is the only symbol that you have where it doesn't matter. Whether you use capital Q or baby Q makes no difference whatsoever. It's just one of those things. It's unusual, but that's the way it is, okay? And T is time. Okay. Now, we measure current with an ammeter, not an amp meter, an ammeter, and it's connected in series. So what that means is if I have my circuit, I'm only drawing part of it, we would connect it in this way because we want all the current to go through it. So if we use, I love, there we go, here's my current and it goes along, goes through the resistor and through the ammeter, okay? All the current has to go through the ammeter because the ammeter literally is like someone sitting at a point and counting as the electrons go by, okay? So when the current's going, it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's counting and it goes to millions or whatever the case may be, and we get our current. In reality, great teens, current is actually very, very, very dangerous. At school level, we use very, very tiny currents. Now, obviously, with our calculations, we, we often make the, the numbers a little bit bigger than they really are. But currents as small as one ampere can kill you. That's why you have to be so, so careful with electricity. Voltage is dangerous, very much so, but it's not the voltage that kills you. So po overhead power lines, you can get a 10,000 volt shock and survive. You'll be horribly burnt and disfigured, but you can get, you will survive, but one amp will kill you. So please be careful, great teens. Your dealing with electricity is very dangerous, can cause a lot, a lot of damage, and if it doesn't kill you, it can seriously, seriously maim you. Okay, which is why cable theft is such a problem. Besides the fact that it interrupts our power supply, it, it really is very, very dangerous. Okay, so please be careful with your electricity. Right. You guys are ready to do a problem or two. Let's look. Okay, so here we have an amount of charge. Okay, so charge, and this is a good way to look through it. We go an amount of charge. Charge means Q is equal to 45 coulombs. Let's write that down. Okay, it moves past a point. Okay, in a circuit in one second, that's time. And now they ask, what is the current? Now they want I. Now, great tens, when you look at this and you go, oh, that, I don't need to write that down, please do. When I teach my learners, this is exactly what I tell them to do because, and I've said this before, is when you read your questions, Often, there's lots of words, and you get a little confused, okay? This is a nice short question, so you go, well, I can't get that confused, and I agree, you can't. But, get into the habit of highlighting, circling, underlining something, the information as you're given it, and then write a list. Now, there are no marks for this list at all, okay? You don't get marks for this list. You don't get, well, okay, they knew, not at all. There's no marks given to that in your in your in your in your um, exams. But this list helps me decide which equation to use because now I've got I, I've got Q, I've got T. Now, of course, we've only used two today, but that obviously tells me I've got to use I equals Q over T. Now, remember, grade tens, that you have to give me an equation. You can't just randomly put letters down or randomly put numbers in the middle of nowhere because you feel like it. Okay, so Q is 45, T is one, and I'm hoping you don't need your calculators. So we get 45 amps. Done, nice and simple. That was a nice question. Ready for another one? 
Good. Okay, here we go. Right. Calculate the work done. Work done. So that's W. Okay. When 30 coulombs of charge, so that's Q, passes through a light bulb with a potential difference of 6 volts. So that's B. Okay. Nice and easy. Another way we could have phrased this question in grade, nine, grade 10, sorry, is we could have said calculate the energy dissipated, okay? Or calculate the energy given off by the heat of the light bulb, okay? Anything to do with energy means work. So whether if they're asking for work or whether they're asking for energy, it's the same thing, all right? Good. Now, we go back and we say, okay, where well, the equation was V equals W over Q. Now you'll go, oh, hang on, wait, 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 Tracy. You wrote capital Q there, little Q there. Well, I write capital Q because that's what I'm used to. All right. Little Q is how it should be on your information sheet. Like I said, it doesn't make a difference. They're the same thing. All right. You ready? Good. So now we've got six volts, W's over here, and Q is 30, okay, we need to get W on its own, so we recognize we need to times both sides by 30, so we're going to go 6 times 30, and we take out the calculators, we go, oh, could have done that in my head if I thought about it, okay, 180 joules. Okay, that's actually really, really small. Great tens, just so you know. It's really not a big amount at all. 30 coulombs of charge in reality when it comes to current is actually very small as well. Okay, and this here, I haven't taken into consideration how long that takes. So I haven't said 30 coulombs of charge which passes in three seconds. Okay, so it'd be a current of 10 amps. This doesn't take time into consideration. So whether this took 10 minutes or three seconds or half a second, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we've covered potential difference so far and we've covered current. And before we move on to the next section where we're actually going to look at our circuits and that sort of thing, we're gonna do one more question. Here we go. Write definitions for each of the following. I cannot emphasize enough to you grade 10 how important it is that you know your definitions. Probably 10 to 15 percent of any test or an exam will be definitions and this is seen as straight recall. Stuff you should just know. You don't have to apply anything. You don't have to think about it. Make sure you know this, all right? Now, the definition for ampere is that it is the units of charge. Ah, oh, not charge, I'm lying to you, it's the units of current. I'm hoping someone was actually moaning at me at the TV. Okay, it's the units of current. Now, it seems a little silly as a definition, but that's exactly what it is. It's the units of current. What is coulombs? Coulomb is the unit of charge. Simple, 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 nothing difficult here. What is a voltmeter? Now, here, I told you what a voltmeter does. So if you're gonna define a voltmeter, you're gonna tell me that it is a device or an appliance or piece of equipment, something to that effect, that measures potential difference. across a component, Ooh, let me spell properly for you, component in an electrical circuit. Okay, 
So it's a device that measures the potential difference across, not of, just across, a component in an electrical circuit. Okay? Lots of theory definitions to put in there. We're going to get onto the juicy stuff in a second. So we're going to end there for a little bit. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with the resistors. <laughs> Welcome back. So now we get onto the fun stuff. I really like this. Okay. Now, pay very careful attention. I'm really hoping what I'm going to do now is not new to any of you. But these are very important little bits and pieces that we've got to get because we're going to look at our symbols for circuit diagrams because they're very, very important. First thing we're going to look at is a light bulb. Now, a light bulb, remember, glows when a charge passes through it. A light bulb is also a very special resistor. We often just use light bulbs in our circuits because we want to, because it shows current really nicely. I'm hoping you're all screaming at the TV going, I know what it looks like. It's a circle with a cross in it. And remember, we must have the connectors. So it's a little bit like an X-Man circle. That's a terrible circle. Okay, please, you drawing on a piece of paper and you're drawing flat, so yours will actually look really nice. Now, the next one is a battery. Please, grade tens here, you've got to make a distinction between a battery and a cell. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put a cell at the bottom because in everyday language we talk about batteries and we will talk about when we go by torch battery or pen light battery and it's a single unit in science a single unit like that is actually a cell so a cell is a single positive and negative remember that here the big line is your positive your little line is your negative, right? Now, how I remember that is I can take the big line, cut it in half, make a plus sign out of it. Doesn't matter which way around you draw this. I naturally, for whatever reason, draw the big line on the left, little line on the right. Doesn't matter, grade, nine, grade tens. It makes no difference whatsoever. It's still a cell. When we come to a battery, batteries can actually be drawn in two ways. If we know that, say, the battery has three cells in it, then I draw it like this. One, two, three. I draw three cells together. If it is just a battery where I don't know how many cells are in it, so it could be 10, 20, 30, whatever the case may be, then I draw it like this. One line, whole bunch of little dots, a dotted line, and another one. Okay, so on the left we have a battery that consists of three cells. This could be four, five, two, whatever. Battery which unknown number of cells. A battery in science is when we have two or more cells connected. Whether that be in series or parallel doesn't matter. Series increases voltage, parallel makes them last longer, but there's got to be more than one cell. If it's a single cell on its own, then it's a cell. We call it a cell. It's so one of those hard things to get in our heads because we use the word battery every day. Or maybe not every day, but we use it in everyday language where it means a single cell. What is its function? To provide energy. We've just discussed that. It gives me the EMF. Our battery has EMF. Okay? Gives us EMF. Then we get to our switch. Now a switch opens or closes a circuit. So there's obviously two ways we can draw a switch. First way, if we draw an open switch, it's open. That makes sense. All right. A closed switch, we need to make sure we have our little dots. Now we know it's closed. Please remember that in order for current to flow, my circuit needs to be complete. If we don't close the switch, no current will flow. So we have to have a closed switch. Very important. Next one. And remember, sorry, let's just put this here. If it's closed, we can have current. Okay, very important. Resistor. Please be careful here, grade 10. 
Electric circuits and electricity have been in the curriculum for many, 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 many years. If you look at textbooks and you're trying to find extra questions, they haven't really changed much over the years, but the diagrams have. So please be careful because you're not going to see this symbol because we changed the symbol about seven or eight years ago. We've gone into this one. So please be careful with older textbooks or older um, workbooks where you got extra questions because they, the, resist, the symbol for resistance will be different. And a resistor is drawn as a little box. The reason why we draw it as a box is because it resembles the type of resistors we put in electric circuits, which are actually just round, um, they, little, they look like little cylinders that we put into a circuit. These are resistors that change current, so this isn't a specific resistor like a light bulb which has a function, which is to provide light. These resistors are there because they, they change the current, it's a way for us to adjust the current in a circuit. Okay, resists the flow of charge. Then a voltmeter, which I've already drawn today, but a voltmeter is a circle with a V in it, nice and easy. It's a device that measures voltage for us, potential difference. Our ammeter, which I've also drawn one of today. All right, it's got an A in it. Remember, a voltmeter must be connected in parallel. And our ammeter must be connected in series. Very, very important. You cannot get these the wrong way around. If you connect a voltmeter in series, no current will flow. Okay, completely shuts it off. It's got such a high resistance, it just can't happen. If you connect an ammeter in parallel, no, no current will go through the resistor. You've connected it over. Okay, it actually shorts your circuit. Then, your connecting need, this is really nice and easy, is a line. Well, that was hard. Okay, so that's what connects everything together, and we're very excited about that. Okay, you ready? Ready to move on to a little bit more? Let's go on to resistance. This is a big emphasis for grade 10. Resistance. How do we define resistance? Resistance slows down the flow of charge in a circuit. It's hard for the electrons to move through a resistor, okay? Think of it as runners on a road and all of a sudden they come to a mud patch, okay? It's nice and easy on the road, you get to the mud patch and it becomes hard. Or running on the beach, okay? It's really nice to run on the hard beach sand, but then you get to that soft sand and it's really, really, really hard. That's resistance, it slows down the flow of charge. The unit of resistance is the ohm, okay? So a little, it's a capital omega sign, so it's a Greek letter, and the ohm is defined as volt per ampere. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of an extension here. This equation, R equals V over I. That's how we define resistance. This comes from an important law known as Ohm's law. Now, Ohm's law was devised by a very, very special man named George Simon Ohm. I particularly like this man because he was a school teacher, actually, and then he did all of this on his own in the 1700s. And he was the son of a locksmith, which was actually really important because, remember, in the 1700s, they couldn't just go to a hardware store and go, okay, I want three meters of this wire and I want that and I want this and here we go and set up the circuits. In your school laboratory, we can prove Ohm's law in 10 minutes. We can take out all the equipment, put it all together, done, proved Ohm laws, off we go. He couldn't do that. He literally had to make every single piece of equipment himself. He had to make his own voltmeters, he had to make his own ammeters, he had to make his own power supply, which means with power supply he was using a chemical reaction known as electrolysis. He also had to make his own wire because you couldn't go to the shop and buy 10 centimeters of copper wire that was one millimeter in diameter the whole way across. You just couldn't. It just wasn't possible. He had to make all of that. He spent years and years and years on this. He did other stuff as well. This wasn't the only thing he did, but this was the most important law that he did. And what he realized is that resistance, okay, the resistance of a resistor is directly proportional to the voltage, indirectly proportional to the current, okay? So current and voltage are actually directly proportional to each other. If I increase the voltage, the current must go with it. 
If I decrease the current, the voltage must go with it over a particular resistor. Okay, so a resistor always has the ratio of its voltage divided by its current. No exceptions. Very, very important. So Ohm's law, you're going to see it every now and then. It's not a big emphasis in your curriculum this year. But it's a very important law because it tells me that resistance is defined as voltage divided by current. It's the ratio of voltage divided by current. You okay with that? Now, R is resistance. Let's just go through what all of this is. And it's measured in ohms. It's like a little hat. V is potential difference or voltage. We're going to use that word often. Measured in volts. And I is current measured in amperes. Now please be careful because of the font we're using on our smart board that I looks like a little L. It's not. It's capital I. Okay. So make sure when you write it down you have its hat and its shoes on. Okay. So top and the bottom. You guys okay with that? R equals V over I. Why is that important? We're going to get there. First, and now this is so so important in this year's work. We need to look at resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Okay? Now, what we have here, what does it mean to have resistors in series? They're all in a row. So resistance goes through the first resistor, current goes through the second resistor, goes through the second resistor, and it doesn't really go on a little squiggly line, but it's okay. Point is, all the current goes through the resistors, okay? It goes from one to the next, to the next, to the next. They are connected one after the other, okay? Why is that important? Because this comes to my first point. Number one, resistor, for resistors in series, current is the same everywhere. Please look, and this is also a way of doing your questions. Now, I know this pretend that my very nice colorful line is like a highlighter, yellow, green, blue, orange, whatever. Can you see that the same line goes through all the resistors? This represents my current, which means my current at the beginning is the same as the current in the middle, which is the same as the current over here, which is the same as the current over there. So if I call that I1, and that I2, and that I3, and that I4, in other words, if I put ammeters at all of those places, I would get exactly the same reading. And I would write it like this. I1 equal to I2 equal to I3 equal to I4. Okay? That's important here. Current is the same the whole way through, which tells me that if I know the current through this resistor, then I know the current through that resistor, then I know the current through that resistor. Very, very important. Next thing, now I'm just going to draw my diagram again. Voltage is divided. This you've got to get. So if I have my three resistors, which are in series, and I put voltmeters here, let's call that V1, let's call this one V2, call that one V3, and then over here, let's put one over all three, which we'll call V4. Okay, now, in each of these resistors, I haven't told you what the resistors are, so they may or may not be the same. As the current goes through each of these, it loses energy as it goes along. But if the resistors are not the same, so if they're not all 3 ohms or 10 ohms or three, 1 ohm, whatever the case may be, they are going to lose a different amount of energy every single time it goes through. Okay? Which means V1 does not have to be equal to V2, which does not have to be equal to V3. But... V4, which is all of them together, is going to be equal to all of those added together. Okay? If these three resistors 
are the only things in the circuit, then V4 would be equal to what's in the, from the cell, the EMF of the cell. You got it? The EMF of the cell is your total voltage of the circuit, no matter what we do in the circuit, no matter how many components we put in. If I tell you that the cell has an EMF of 15 volts, all your voltages on your circuit must be equal to 15 volts. No exception. You can't get more than that. Because then what you're saying is that it's losing more energy than it, got take, than it took in. Okay? And then it's like a girl trying to lose weight. Okay, somehow she lost it. Not going to happen in a circuit. I'm hoping you get this. So in series, my current stays the same. My voltage divides. Okay? Current the same. Voltage divides. Then resistance increases. What does that mean? When I look at my resistors here, man, this is hard work for my circuit, for my current. Gets to the first one, it loses energy, gets, it loses more energy, gets, it loses more energy. Just gets more and more tired as it goes along. Resistance increases, makes the resistance really, really large. So when we want to calculate resistance, oh, I wanted my total resistance, I would say R1, which is my first resistor, plus R2, which is my second resistor, plus R3, which is my third resistor, plus, 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 plus. So if I had 20 resistors in series, I would just add all of them together. Okay, simple, nice and easy. It's not as difficult as it looks. So what are we getting for resistors in series? The current is the same everywhere. The voltage gets divided, and how much voltage it is depends on the resistance, okay? And then we add all of them together, and three, the resistance gets higher. So we would add resistors in series to increase the resistance of the circuit and maybe to lower the current. So what we do in electrical appliances, great team, when you plug in an electrical appliance, you just go, there we go, it works, you know, but Every electrical appliance has to work on a different amount of current. How do we make sure that the fact that from Eskim we get 220 volts or 240 volts supply, we need to adjust the current so that it works properly, we add resistors into the circuit to change the current so we can adjust it as needed. All right? You with me? All right. Good. Now, the fun one. Resistors in parallel. What does parallel actually mean? Now watch her, and I love this because I get to play with the, all the pretty colors on here. This is a good idea to do in, your, in class so you can see this. Current comes over here. Oops, now it has a choice. Okay, now I haven't told you that these are the same at all. So some of the currents, I'm using a different highlight. It goes here. And gets to there. Some of the current, let's use that one, goes over there. And some of the current gets, let's use the flowers because it's also still round. Okay. And gets to here. Now, this I need you to get, great tens. The total current. My current is split into three. What I started with must be what I end with. You can't lose current along the way. Please get this. You can't say that I have three amps coming into the parallel section and only two amps coming out. Because then somehow you lost an amp. You lost one ampere of current. Which means somehow these electrons have gone on holiday. Which is not going to happen. Now, with my colored highlights, the reason why I do that is I want you to see that electrons make a choice. Electrons, and I've said this before, are like teenagers, they're lazy. They will t take the path of least resistance. So when the current splits up, if all three of my resistors are the same, then each will get the same amount of current. It'll just divide into three. If they're different, 
the electrons will choose the path of least resistance and then go from there. So if my top resistor has the smallest resistance, most of the current will go through the top one, then some will go through the second one, some will go through the bottom one. It splits up, okay? It all depends on resistance because electrons don't want to lose energy, okay? I can understand that. They want to be nice and calm and have, they want to just keep what they've got. So current comes in, let's call that I1, let's call this one I2, let's call the current through there I3, let's call the current through there I4, and let's call the current over here I5. This is what you need to know. I1 and I5 are equal, exactly the same. I1 is equal to I5. So important, before and after cannot lose electrons, can't lose the current. But it has now divided into three. So it's equal to I2. Let me write that so you can actually read it, shall I? So I've said I1 equal to I5. That's equal to I2 plus I3, plus I4. Those three added together gives me my total. Okay? My current is divided. Current divided. What about voltage? Now this one you've got to get. Okay. I'm going to give myself a little more room. You'll see now why. Okay, and I put a voltmeter here, a voltmeter here, and then, okay, let's call that one V1, V2, V3, and V4. Very, very important here, let's listen up. Voltage measures my potential difference. So voltage is measuring essentially how much energy my electrons lose. When the electrons get to the parallel section, so they get over here, first part, they have a certain amount of energy. Now they go through the circuit and they split up and they split up in different values because different resistors will use up different amounts of energy. But when they all come together on the other side, so all of them come back over here, at this point, they all need to join up and keep moving together, which means they all need to have the same amount of energy when they get there. So the energy lost over each of these has to be the same for the electrons. Doesn't matter what the voltage, what the resistors is, okay? So the energy lost, the voltage must be the same. Otherwise, there's gonna be a bit of a traffic jam. I'm pretty sure at some stage you've all been on the highway where it's been peak hour traffic and you've noticed that the fast lane's gotten really fast and you guys are going along and then all of a sudden you get to an on-ramp and traffic just seems to stop because the people coming onto the highway on the on-ramp aren't going at the same speed, okay? So they don't have as much energy as the cars that were originally on the highway and it just causes a traffic jam. We don't want that. Okay, so it's like the electrons are coming back onto the highway of the circuit, but they've all got to have the same amount of energy. So they have a certain amount of energy when they go off. Okay, think of it as them going off the highway, they go their own separate ways. Now they're coming back onto the highway having lost energy, but they're going to have the same amount of energy as they go along. So the voltage is the same everywhere, which means V1 equal to V2 equal to V3, equal to V4, okay? Got that? Energy off the highway, energy onto the highway. We haven't lost any cars along the way, so no one had an accident, which is great. How do we calculate? All right, why do we put resistors in parallel? Because it decreases overall resistance, one. Number two, if one of these resistors should break, the others will carry on going, which is great. We can switch them on um, separately. 
It's also why Christmas lights, for example, are so annoying because they're connected in series, which means if one Christmas light blows, you have to go through all of them to find it. It's very annoying. How do we calculate resistance, the total resistance in parallel? 1 over R parallel, it's a fraction, which means we would go 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus, plus, plus. If you had 4, you would do 4. If you had 5, you would do 5. And then this becomes a mass problem more than anything else. But what do you need to remember? It starts off as a fraction. When you get to the end of the sum, and we are going to look at some problems here, you need to turn your fraction upside down, otherwise you're going to get it wrong. Okay, so please be careful here, grade 10s. This, this is the one part where I worry about the maths. A lot of you probably have these calculators, okay, which you're able to do maths. I'm not sure if this one can do maths. There are a lot of calculators which can do fractions. You do have a fraction button. You're welcome to use it, okay? I don't mind. I don't particularly use it, but that's because I'm old school, all right? And I don't teach maths, so I don't really like doing that. I know you guys should have been taught how to use it. You're welcome to. Just make sure you do it properly, okay? Please, please be careful when using that function on your calculator. Otherwise, we're going to look at a couple of problems just now where we actually do the math, and I'll show you how to do it because I've got a nice problem. It's not a nice great math problem, but that's okay. It's quite a nice problem. So what have we got? Because we're going to go to a break in a second, and then we're going to come back and do some problems. In parallel, current is divided, voltage is the same, and resistance decreases. In series, current is the same, voltage is divided and resistance increases. Okay, you got that? I hope you have. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to do some calculations and we're going to have this aced. So I'll see you just now. Welcome back. And now we get to the fun part. I actually get very excited about this. I know it's very sad. My learners do laugh at me at school, I understand. I love circuits and circuit problems, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty of what we were doing in the first couple of sessions. So, let's look at our very first question. It says to you, three identical light bulbs. What does that mean for us? They have the same resistance. A, B, and C are connected in an electric circuit as shown. I'm not even going to look at the question. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens with the current. Now, please, grade tens. I make my learners in my classroom do this. We're going to take a colored highlighter. Remember, we're looking at conventional current. Conventional current goes from negative to positive. Current comes out my circuit, goes over here, gets to that point. Oh, we now have a choice. We're very excited. They're identical, which is nice, which means that my current splits up exactly the same. So the current through B and the current through C is the same because they're the same resistance. It'll, the current doesn't matter which way around it goes. And then it comes back together and goes through my cell. Again, now I don't know at this point whether we're going to have to do a question which is quantitative, which means calculations based, though I'm going to suggest that perhaps we're not going to have to because they haven't given me any values at this point, or qualitative, which means it's descriptive. Let's look at what they give us. First question, how bright is light bulb A compared to B and C? When they talk about brightness in a question like this, great teens, they're asking you to look at current. The brighter the light bulb, the bigger the current. So if we look in our diagram again and we go, well, a got all the current, B and C only got half the current each because it would have split into two. That means A is brighter than B and C. Okay, they didn't ask you why, so let's add that in. Why? Okay, so how bright is bulb A compared to bulb B? Bulb A is brighter than bulb B and C. Why? because bulb A gets more current. Bulb B and C only get half the current each. Guys okay with that? Good. Then, this is a nice question. How bright are the bulbs 
after switch S has been opened. So I'm going to go back here. Let's take this off. Switch S gets open. So essentially, it's like, let's rubbing it out. Okay, switch S now is open. I want you to see something now. My current comes here. It cannot go through S anymore. Goes through B, through. So, what we have done is we have removed bulb C. By taking bulb C out of the question, we have actually increased. Now, you've got to listen carefully to this. We've increased the current. Okay? Increased the current. This is a hard concept. When, remember, I said to you, when I add resistors in, in parallel, I am decreasing the resistance, making it smaller, which means if I take one of these resistors out, my total now becomes bigger. Just as a thing for you to remember as you go along, when you add resistors in parallel, your total resistance is always smaller than your smallest resistor. So, if this had been 2 ohms and this had been 2 ohms, my total here would be less than 2. I now take the C out, now it's 2, it's got bigger. And I've added it in series. So my total resistance has increased, which means my total current must get smaller. My voltage hasn't changed. My cell gives the same amount of energy. Okay, so it's the same as you have the same breakfast every day. Now, one day, you don't have phys ed, you don't have to go to school and run around, so you don't use as much energy. The next day, same breakfast, but now you have to do phys ed, you have to go run around and play soccer and netball or whatever the case may be. You're much tighter when you get to the end because your resistance has increased. Current is smaller. Okay, so how bright are the bulbs? They are less bright. Okay, they are not as bright as they were in A. What will probably happen though is that bulb A will be less bright than it was originally, but bulb B will be slightly brighter because it's probably got a little bit bigger current, but we're not going to go into that. Then, how do the currents, and we've actually just discussed this, how do the currents in bulb A and B change when the switch is open? Well, I've already said to you that we realize that the total current must decrease. So let's only consider current A. We go decrease, decrease, oh, all right, well, that means that's not an option, that's not an option. So we're not even going to consider C and D. This is how we answer multiple choice. Now we're going to go, okay, well, what does that mean about my current in B? Current in B will also decrease because my total has decreased, so it's B. Okay. Hard question to start off with. We thought we'd just dump you right there in, in the deep end as we go along. The nice thing about this is there's no calculations. Okay? This is a qualitative question. I only want descriptions. Be careful, grade tens. For example, with A, I just said how bright, not why. Do not add in the explanation of why if it's not asked for. Because then you tend to confuse yourself, you tend to get all bent out of shape and you waste time answering questions that aren't there. This would probably only be worth two marks maybe without the explanation. If I asked for an explanation, I would make this worth four marks. Okay? You guys okay with that? Brilliant. Now let's get on to the fun stuff, the calculations. Question two says to us that we have, let's just make that a little bit so we've got it all in one place, three resistors in parallel with a resistance of 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 11 ohms. What is the total resistance of the parallel combination? What does that mean? Let's draw a quick diagram. Three resistors. Okay, uh, maybe not quite as long as that. Oh, there we go. There we go. I like to draw diagrams. I'm very visual, so it makes things easier for me. 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 11 ohms. Great, that what it means it's parallel. Parallel means we've got to use a fraction. Oh, dear. Okay, so 
total resistance. 1 over R parallel is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Please, 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 I'm begging you. You must, must, must have an equation. Then, that means 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 11. Now starts the fun part for a lot of you. Like I said, you're welcome to use your calculators at this point, but let's actually do the maths because it's a very good exercise for you. Remember, we're looking at fraction. To do a fraction, we need to find our lowest common denominator, which is actually going to be 3 times 4 times 11. My lowest common denominator is going to be 132. Okay, now to know what we must multiply this one by, we go 132, let's do that, divided by 3, which means we're going to have 44. We would do the same with the 4, and we're going to get an answer of 33. And then for 11, it would be 12. Okay, so what that gives us is an answer of 89 over 132. Be careful now. Please be careful. At the top of this, this is 1 over r parallel. I need an answer of r parallel equals. You may not. You may not, you may not, you may not, because you've got to flip this over, do this. Well, then that's equal to 132 over 89. No, it's not. 89 over 132 is not equal to 132 over 89. You're right. Therefore, our parallel equals 132 over 89. Also be careful because most of your calculators will give you this answer as a fraction. A fraction is not an acceptable answer here, grade 10s. You have to, have to change this into a decimal and it's 1,48 ohms. You must change it into a decimal, okay? Now, if we go back here, remember I said to you in the last segment, I said to you that the total resistance of a parallel combination will always be smaller than the smallest resistance. We just proved that. Because here, my smallest resistor is 3 ohms and my total is 1,48. Now, what that means is if I wasn't concerned with splitting up the current, I could take all three of these resistors out of the circuit and replace it with one resistor of 1,48 ohms, and it will do exactly the same job. Okay? You happy with that one? The maths isn't nice here, grade, nine, grade tens. You're welcome to use your calculator if you know how to use it properly. Please be careful with that, okay? Make sure you know how to use it properly if you're going to use your calculator to do this using um, the fractions here, okay? I never use that, so I wouldn't do that personally because I never use that, but I'm very old school. It shows my age. We didn't have calculators that did that, though I did have calculators when I was at school. We just didn't have ones that could do that. Okay, so please be careful for me. You guys ready for another one? Okay, we are moving on there. This was a hard one. Let's go to the next one. Question three. The same three resistors, this is actually carry on from question two, as above, which would have been question two, are now arranged in series. What is the total resistance of the series combination? So, three ohms, four ohms, 11 ohms. Oh, well, why are you thinking to yourself, why didn't they give this to us first? This one's easy. In series, all we have to do is add them together. So, my total is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now, just a quick aside as we're here. I'm hoping you guys have all noticed that I'm using what we call subscripts. In electric circuits, grade, grade 10, especially as you get to 11 and 12, we use the same equations over and over and over and over again, particularly R equals V over I. 
That means that when, you're, when your examiner is marking your paper, we need to know which ones you're talking about, which is what these little subscripts are. They're like giving, you, giving them their names, okay? It's almost like you're going, R is the symbol for a girl. Now, if you went girl equals girl plus girl plus girl plus girl, it doesn't really make sense because you don't know who you're talking about. Okay, but if I say to you, all the girls together is Jane plus Amy plus Mary. We've given them names. We know who we are, who we're talking about. That's what those little subscripts are. They're their names. So we know we're talking about R, but I need to know specifically which one I'm talking about. Okay, and I've done this throughout today's lesson. We've looked at V1, V2, I2, I3. I'm not changing what the concepts are. If it's V, then it means voltage. I'm just giving it a name so I know which ones I'm talking about because that's important. All right, particularly when the questions get a little bit more complicated and now we've got lots of values running around and we need to remember which ones we need. Okay, brilliant. Let's get back to the question. This one's actually really nice because now we have 3 plus 4 plus 11. And I'm hoping you don't need your calculators for this because 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 11 is 18. Huge difference. When we connected these in parallel, it was 1,48 ohms. It was tiny. Connect them in series, it's now 18 ohms. That's a very, very, very big resistance. Great. OK, so ready for another question? Brilliant. Here we go. All right. In a series circuit, three resistors with voltages 2 volts, 5 volts, and 8 volts in a series, there are three resistors, okay? So they say to us we have two volts. Uh, no, let's draw this so it actually looks like what it should be. So we have three resistors. And this resistor, let's call this V1. Let's call this one V2. Let's call this one V3. And they say that V1 is two volts. V2 is five volts. V3 is... 8 volts. What is the voltage across the battery in the circuit? So what we've got to assume here is that this is actually the only thing in the circuit and they want the total voltage. Remember, I said to you right at the beginning, all these voltages when they get divided must be equal to my total, which I'm going to call Vt. Which means it's not as difficult as it looks. My total voltage is V1 plus V2 plus V3. Brilliant. So it's 2 plus 5 plus 8. And that gives me 15 volts. That's not so bad. Okay, now, let's mush this up a little bit, okay? We're going to add a little bit of extra question to this. I'm going to tell you that the resistance of my second resistor over here is 2.5 ohms, okay? From that small piece of information, I want to know what R1 is, and I want to know what R3 is, and I want to know what the current through the circuit is. We're going to calculate three things, and I've only added one extra piece of information. Let's call this R2. You have to start with calculating I. There's no way around this, okay? If we go back here, remember, current's going to come out here, go out here, go through. Sorry, I just don't want to. I, I don't want to go over my R1. Okay, it's a series circuit. Current's the same everywhere. So I need I. When it comes to R2, I know the. I don't know the current. 
but I knew I do know voltage and I do know resistance. So voltage in V2 is 5 volts. The resistance is two and a half, and I want I. Remembering way back about half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, we looked at the equation for R. R2 is V2 divided by I. Okay, I want I. R2, two and a half. V2 is five. Brilliant, not so bad. We recognize, let's do it, that those two are going to swap places. So I is five divided by two and a half, two amps. My current through the circuit is two amps. Now all I needed was the two and a half ohms because this means that there's two amps going through R1 and there's two amps going through R2. Well, I can now calculate R1 and R3. I know voltage and I know current. Voltage and current. And my diagram is getting messier and messier as we go along. So, for R1, we know that the voltage was 2 volts. Okay, 2 volts given. We know the current is 2 amps. It's in, para in series, so the current is the same everywhere. R1 equals V1 over I. 1 ohm. Good R3. We don't know R3. We know V3. We said it was 8 volts. We know current because it hasn't changed. So R3 is V3 divided by I. So it's 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Now I'm going to add another question into this just because I can. What is the total resistance of the circuit? So let's go back here. Okay. And let's just make it so it's a little neater. Okay. Uh, let's take that out. Um, just so we remember what we've got everywhere. It got a little out of hand. Remember, we're drawing all over it. So there's my V1. And we know that's 8 volts. Now, we've just worked out that R1 is, sorry, is 1 amp, I think it was, let's see, R1 is 1 ohm, R2 is 4, so that's 1 ohm, that's 4 ohms, which means I actually have three resistors in series, if we redraw them, because I know it's got a little messy, this was 1 ohm, we just worked it out, I told you this was 2.5 ohms, and this one we worked out to be 4 ohms. So to calculate them, because they're in series, we add them all together. Okay, 1 plus 2.5 plus 4. And that gives me 7.5 ohms. Lots that we can do from only a little bit of information. Okay, this is really important. Please get this great sense. You don't have to have absolutely everything that you do that in order to do calculations. The point is though, is that when you look at your calculations, you've got to deal with it logically and you've got to draw. Be like, I know it's messy. Okay, I know that I've drawn all over the place, but this is why drawing a diagram is so important. They didn't give me a diagram, I drew it. Okay, that diagram makes it easier for us to go and look and decide on everything that's given. Okay, really, really, really important. You ready for one more question? Absolutely you are. So, in a parallel, circuit there are three resistors with voltages 2 volts 2 volts 2 volts 
what is the voltage across the battery in the circuit? So now they're saying to us, now I have three. Okay. And my battery, oh, my battery needs another half. Okay, there's my circuit, and they tell me that this is two volts, two volts, two volts. Brilliant. What is the voltage across the battery? Now, I'm hoping you guys are going, well, oh, actually, that's not so bad, because this is in parallel. Parallel means that my total voltage is equal to the voltage on any one of these. Okay, so it's equal to V1, which is equal to V2, which is equal to V3, which I know I haven't named at this point, but it doesn't actually matter. It's two volts. It's the same everywhere. Now, this is two volts. Once again, I could now add a whole bunch of things into this, where I now say to you, let's make this... 1 ohm, okay, let's make this one um, 2 ohms, okay, and we're going to make the bottom one 4 ohms. And now I say to you, calculate the current in the circuit, the whole circuit. So we go, okay. Well, there's two ways I can do this. First way is I can work out the total current, the total resistance in parallel. Okay? So let's do that. R parallel, R1, R2, R3. So I have 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. My LCD is 4, so it's going to be 4 plus 2, plus 1, 7 over 4, so my parallel is 4 over 7, which if we do on the calculator, okay, is 0 0.58, wait, let's just check that, sorry, 0 0.57, I thought that didn't look right, so my total resistance is 0, 0.57. Okay, so we want, that's my total resistance, would be my total voltage, which we've just worked out, divided by current. So that means we're going to have 0, 0.57 um, I apologize, we know what that actually is equal to equal to 2 over I. Remember they're going to change places. Now this we need to use on the calculator and we get 3,5. 3,5 1 amps. Okay that's my total. Now I told you there were two ways you could have done this. Let's look at that way quickly. I'm just going to quickly redraw this part of the circuit because it's getting a bit messy. Let's do it actually on another page. Okay, so we have our two, and I said they're all two volts, and I said this was one ohm. We said this was two ohms, and we said this was four ohms, and we have two volts for all of them. Okay, let's call this one R1, R2. And R3. Now, in parallel, remember your current gets split. So the other way I could do this, instead of working out the totals, is I can work out the individual currents and add them all together. So let's do that. Okay? So let's look at R1, which is going to be the voltage divided by the current going through R1, which we're going to call I1. So we have 1 ohm, 2 volts and my current, so here my current is 2 divided by 1, 2 amps. Okay, so I'm going to write that in so I remember. Let's do R2, 
R2 is the same thing. But now we have R2 was 2 ohms, 2 volts. So I2 is 2 divided by 2, which is 1 amp. Brilliant. Let's put 1 amp. Are you guys starting to see what's going to happen here? I hope so. I'm just going to do R3 over here, just so that it's not as far down, so you can see it. All right. Voltage divided by I3. So we have 4, 2 divided by I3. So I3 is 2 divided by 4, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so my total current is I1 plus I2 plus I3. Let's write that in. My total is I1 plus I2 plus I3. So it's 2 plus 1 plus a half. 3 and a half amps. Now, you've been paying very careful attention. You'll go, wait, 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 wait. There's a problem, Tracy. We got 0, 0,31 here. The only reason why you get 0, uh, 3, 51, sorry, is because of the fraction is because of the fraction. Because we round off my resistance in parallel. If I had used more decimal places in this, so watch, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Let's just move this over here. So instead of, so four divided by seven is, and there's my answer, 0, 0.5714, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If I use that answer and I need to, go 2 divided by it. So I'm going to 2 divided by that answer. I get exactly 3 and a half. So if I kept all the decimals from the fraction, I would get 3 and a half. But remember, we don't. We round off. And that is taken into consideration. So please don't get too worried about that. It is actually the same answer. Doesn't matter which way around you do it. You need to look at how the question's asked to you, grade tens. Okay, depending on whether we want to lead you, whether we're looking at a little bit more of a method, but it actually doesn't matter. All right, great session, guys. We've done a lot of work today. Remember, we did V equals W over Q because we looked at potential difference. We used I equals Q over T because we looked at current. Then we looked at diagrams. Well, we looked at components of a circuit, and then we've dealt with resistors and series in parallel, where resistors and series, current is the same, voltage gets divided, Resistance is increased, resistors in parallel, current is divided, voltage is the same, resistance decreases. And we briefly looked at Ohm's law, but we looked at the equation R equals V over I, which is a really, 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 really important equation. Okay, that's where we're going to end this on circuits. Best way to learn circuits, practice, practice, practice. Okay, I hope you learned a lot, and we will see you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.